So you're thinking about getting into exotic pheasants, but you don't know what species is right for you. Well, today we're gonna go over that. Welcome back, Spit and Tracks crew. How y'all doing out there? All is well here. Last week we put out a lot of videos, huh? We're not kind of crazy. That we were just pumping them out, you know. Not so many shorts, but the long videos. I had time to do them. I'm gonna do them. You know how we get down around here, you know. We got something to say about the birds. We say it, okay? Anyways, guys, glad you guys joined me once again. Now, what I want to go over today is there's a lot of new viewers, you know, and a lot of my new viewers. They are unfamiliar with exotic pheasants. They're like really uh, mesmerized by these birds. They've never seen them in their life, you know? And I've went over this before about how people who aren't into birds or pheasants, aviculture, avian, anything. Um, yeah, they see these birds and they're like, I never knew these existed. And that's what I like to hear because I'm bringing it to people who never knew they existed. So anyways, what I'm getting to here is a lot of these people want to get into exotic pheasants, you know? And um, I kind of want to go over you know, a couple of different species here. And um, we'll figure out which one's right for you guys. You know, because all my new viewers, before you get them, you know, make sure it's something you want. You don't want to be like, you know, getting these birds and this bird and you realize you don't like either one of them. Pheasants aren't your thing. Well, that's what I'm going to try to go over for you guys today. All right. So glad you guys joined me. All my old viewers, you guys have any input, put it down in the comments below. You know, help our newbies out here. All right. How can you preserve the future of our birds? without bringing in new people, especially a younger generation, you know? So that's what we're here to try to do. So let's go over a few birds and see what's, what they're all about. So here we have, of course, Boss Man. This is my golden pheasant named Boss. Very, very beautiful golden pheasant here. Um, he does look forward to me coming out every day. You know, for the most part, all my birds do. This is one beautiful bird. As you know, most pheasants, the males are the prettiest, you know? So, um, he, they are very easy to keep, you know, um, I've seen these things tamed down, like I was saying, quite a bit, you know, beyond my belief or experience, and, um, yeah, just very easy to keep, they breed well in captivity, they do well in captivity. Overall, this would be, I think, the best beginner bird, but, you know, each species has their own temperament, their own personality, and every animal has their own personality. But, I mean, as an overall beginner bird, beginner species of pheasant, it would be this golden pheasant right here. No doubt about it. And if you want to, like, get a tree or something, that'd be a good way to start. The hens lay quite, quite well. And their eggs are easy to incubate. Take about 23 days to hatch. And, uh, yeah. All right, guys, let me fill you in on the yellow golden pheasant now. Yellow golden pheasant is the same species as the golden pheasant. It's just a color mutation, you know, where it inhibits all that red. So he's all yellow and gold. This one, I would have to say, is easier to keep than the regular golden pheasant, the wild type golden pheasant, because I've noticed these hens right here, they could be real dolls. They can eat out of your hand. They'll be like all around my feet sometimes when I come in here and I have to watch so I don't step on them. I would have to say this is, you know, if I had to pick between this one and the golden pheasant, it would be uh, all the yellows for sure. It's a lot more calmer. See how close I am to uh, Popeye here. He doesn't really uh, he doesn't really care that much. I even touch his tail sometimes. I don't think he likes it, but he don't really care. But yes, you can't go wrong with the Chrysalophus pictus. Very fascinating species. Sometimes Boss Man right here will even uh, see me come outside and he'll start dancing but not a show. It's like he's doing it because I'm here and he's excited. Popeye does that quite well too. Put on a show for me when I come out here. But overall, I wanna go over these guys first because these ones I believe are the easiest of all exotic pheasants. Or any pheasants for that matter. Okay, I don't have too much experience with the Reeves guys, but um, I have buddies who are. And they all say that they are the spawn of Satan. And uh, so, yeah, if you guys want a bird that's going to be nice to you, I wouldn't recommend a Reeves. Not all are going to be mean, of course, but most of them, they are. Just the way it is. Very protective. 
especially during breeding season. This is our boy Christopher right here. You know, even if he is aggressive, we'll uh, we'll deal with that when the time comes. But definitely not a beginner's bird, I would say. They might turn you off from all pheasants, actually. Right, Amy? All up in my business. But I will say this about the Reese pheasant. They are some beautiful birds. Not the brightly colored, but their, their feather pattern is just awesome, you know? See the hens there? Even the hens are marked really beautifully. Very beautiful birds. Another species of pheasant that can be human aggressive, the silver pheasant. But this guy, Pedro here, he hasn't been aggressive so far. He's uh, He's been really chill, relaxed bird. And I would have to say, next to the golden pheasant, one of the birds that I've seen that you can tame down quite a bit. Now, Pedro here, Runs up along his wall when he sees us like a puppy. Like, come, come pay me attention. And I mean, I'm right here next to him. Even the female right here. You see her? Nice, nice uh, specimen here. Very beautiful true pheasant hen. Now, um, yeah, another pheasant that would be good for a beginner would be a silver pheasant. But some of them can be human aggressive too. They don't got quite the reputation that the Reeves have. But... You know, it happens. And um, just a little note, the silver pheasant was the only species of pheasant that I have successfully free ranged. Yeah, quite interesting, huh? Yeah, but see, I'm right here close up and all he wants is treat. He does not want to be aggressive towards me. But who knows what will happen in the future. Overall, this is a great beginner bird too. You know, if you want a bird that'll eat out of your hand, especially they do that it's just a stick but <laughs> you'll take it from me okay in this pen over here guys we have the himalayan models i'm in some bad lighting here you might jump down as soon as i come up himalayan models guys national bird of nepal this is one beautiful big size pheasant here um their colors are unmatched. I mean, they shimmer like like gold in a flowing clear water river, you know? <laughs> they just shine bright. And they're very, I don't say very, but they are an expensive species of pheasant. Well, some people don't like to call them pheasant, call them models, but you know, they're part of the pheasant family, as a lot of birds are, for that matter. But this bird right here, I've noticed, let me tell you something interesting about them, is when they were young, okay, they were crazy about their hard boiled egg and the brooder, you know, come right up, eat out of your hand. They're pigs. They love to eat, 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 okay? Almost as much as they love to dig. But I've noticed when they, uh, I don't know, get around three, four months, something like that, they start to not be as personable. And then they start to be more secretive and keep to themselves and just kind of cautious of their surroundings. Now, when they're young chicks, they're just like little tanks, you know, they're quite cool at rays, actually. Cuter than a lot of chicks. Very, very distinctly marked from other birds in the brooder. But yeah, as they get older, they become more secretive. That's what I realized with mine, you know? So yeah, like that female in there, for instance, her and her broodmates would come eat right out of my hand. They had no worries at all. And they get a certain age and then they just like, um, I don't like you that much anymore. <laughs> I know. Crazy, huh? All right, guys, let's go visit the tragopons. Now, at the tragopons, they can be tamed down quite a bit, too. You see this Missy right here? This is Missy Tragopon. She will eat out of my hand, no worries at all. And uh, the male does, too. These guys can be tamed down quite a bit. They seem very secretive, kind of like the Himalayan models, but more personable than the Himalayan models, I would say for sure. These guys tame, tame down quite a bit. See, I'm right up next to her and she doesn't care. She's just looking for a treat. Now, treat is a, treats are the thing with these uh, tragopons. You have treats, you can tame them down really quick. Mr. Tragopon over there, see how he's acting all 
like all skittish and I'm hiding from you. But honestly, if I had an apple or a tomato in my hand, he'd be all up on me. So, yeah. If you want a bird that is uh, uh, of this pattern right here, I know they're kind of uniquely marked, you know, but, um, and they might not be right for everybody, but they definitely can be tamed down quite a bit. Pretty cool, huh? Mr. Tragopond. I mean, these guys, they don't really lay that many eggs or anything like that. So if you're looking to produce a lot of chicks, maybe this species ain't for you. But overall, if you just want something in your aviary that's quite chill, the Tragopond's is pretty cool. They might even be more chill than the uh, Goldens as far as getting along with other animals because you know, honestly, I've had a uh, quail in here and these tracker ponds got along with the quail pretty good. It wasn't too bad of a living situation. I've had quail with the uh, goldens, the yellow goldens as a matter of fact, and yellow goldens, you know, chase them around a little bit. But these tracker ponds, now I'm just saying in my experience, they get along with the quail a little bit better. Okay, now, so if you want a bird that puts on a show like no other, you know, Maybe the golden pheasant might try to do something like him, but can't. It's the Lady Amherst pheasant, guys. Bigger flowing tail, best dancer here that we got at the pheasantry for sure. And one of my personal favorites. Let's go check them out. Okay, so here's our Lady Amherst pheasant. Look at that tail. I was saying, longer flowing tail. When these guys display, I mean, they're unmatched. Now they have basically the same type of display as the golden, of course, because they're rough pheasants. They have that cape. You know and they display that cape during uh, courtship you know but something more smooth and graceful about the lady amber's pheasant i think it has a lot to do with their tail you know they whip that tail when they display and you know you just you're just taken back by it now they aren't as brightly colored as a golden pheasant But you see that right there where he jumped down and just that tail just whipped so long. I like it. On that note though, I will say that the Lady Amherst pheasant is a little bit more shy than the golden. As far as you know which species can be tamed down the easiest. And uh, I would have to say Lady Amherst, you know, can't tame them down quite as bit as the uh, golden. In my experience. Now so I've seen some people have Lady Amherst that of course are more mellow than goldens but overall the goldens tame down quite a bit more quite a bit more easily you see how he wants nothing to do with me but then boss was like right up along the fence saying hi yeah but just in the the birds i got the bloodlines that i got i've noticed that but i'm not complaining about the lady amherst like i said they're one of the most beautiful birds to preserve here at Split Tracks Pheasantry. If you guys are into getting golden pheasants or Lady Amherst pheasants, please don't mix the species. They are two different species and they will interbreed and the offspring will become fertile. And that's what you don't want. It'll just mess up future generations of uh, Lady Amherst and make it virtually impossible to find anything pure anymore. So please keep them separated, Lady Amherst and golden pheasant. You know, don't mix them. Just my little take. I had to say it. I had to say it. Alrighty, friends. Let's take a little trip over here to the Nepal College and see what they're up to. Okay, now the Nepal College is definitely not a beginner bird. Okay? Most breeders will have this bird just to preserve them. Or just to have a bird or a species that they don't have yet. You know? I'm going to work on keeping these guys as pure as possible. And um, preserve them as much as I can. That's why I have them. Now, I will tell you, because they're skittish, they'll turn you off. If you're a beginner and you get this species, they'll probably turn you off from, from breeding pheasants because you'll be like, what do I have this thing for? It just wants out all the time. But I noticed when I'm around, it looks like he just wants out all the time, okay? But when, when it's feeding day and I'm cleaning their pans or whatever and I, they know I have food that day, you know, they'll pace and actually look forward to me coming. But for the most part, they just act skittish. You know, so you want to be left alone. And I have set up a camera in their uh, aviary here 
just to make sure you know that they're good and happy and everything and sure enough when i leave they're just running around playing in the springtime he's displaying and they look happy as can be so it's really in my presence or anybody's presence that they'll be a little bit more standoffish and skittish like this but as soon as i leave he'll be chilling and relaxing and playing with his female which is he's up here I actually noticed that she's she's more relaxed around me than he is for the most part but here's a species you guys that is not for the beginner for sure okay now last but definitely not least the swin hose pheasant let's go pay him a visit I think we'll just go right into the pen with this one. Okay. Now, my personal opinion, the Swinhose pheasant is one of the most beautiful pheasants ever out there. The male, anyways. I mean, even the females, they're very well marked. You know, their distinctive marks makes them stand out amongst other pheasant hens, for sure. But with the uh, male, and the patterns, the green, the... The maroon shoulders, the white, you know, upper back, and then the rich blue feathers, they're just really unmatched. Now, for this one here, guys, I would say if you want a species that they're easy to keep, no doubt about it, um, just give them a lot of space. That kind of goes for any pheasant, but have them if you like your, you're into pictures, right? Photography. The Swinhose pheasant is one of the most beautiful pheasants to take pictures of. When that light hits them just right, I mean, you can't beat it. Um, they are more secretive pheasant, more chill, more very, very cautious. They kind of stop and freeze and look at you like statues. See them all standing still like that? But anyways, uh, yeah, the male. Let me tell you a little something about the male. He, uh, like I said, is a little standoffish, a little shy around people. But during the springtime, or any time he wants to display, and the waddles on his face are engorged with blood, and he is trying to show off, he's a different bird. He, honestly, it's like Superman and Clark Kent. When he is in that mood of dancing, and his uh, when he's feeling it, and his uh, waddles are all engorged with blood, and he's just in that mood, displaying his wings, he'll come right next to me and display his wings and show off. He wants to be seen. He wants to show off, and. Uh, that's what I really like about him. But when he's not feeling that, like I said, it's like Superman and Clark Kent. He's just uh, not as confident, more standoffish. Just kind of does what the girls do. And you know, like I said, if you're into photography, you know, and great lighting, this bird right here, their, their beauty is unmatched. You see how he's a different bird in that sunlight? absolutely amazing okay so those of you who have been messaging me on my instagram messenger you know asking me about pheasants and you possibly want to get into them which one should i start with this video was pretty much for you guys you know and my experience is i hope will help you guys make a decision on what you want to start with but i would say honestly overall if you want to start with a bird just to see how it goes start with the goldens or the lady amherst um start with those two they are a showier bird. They're more interesting to watch. They're more exciting, you know. People have been known to tame them down pretty good, you know. But like the College or the Himalayan models, that's for more experienced breeders, you know. Especially with the models, you know, they can't handle heat. They can't handle stress. If you put them in a hot environment and they're stressed and unhappy, that just makes it 10 times worse. You know, things like that. But start with some Goldens. Branch out from there because usually if you don't like raising Goldens, you probably don't like raising other pheasants you know now for people like me it's in my blood I appreciate each species in their own distinct category and their own personality I, I'm a bird nerd okay <laughs> so I like them all you know I could raise them all and be perfectly happy you know of course I have my favorites but that's a different story anyhow guys I hope this video helped you out and um, if you have any more questions hit me up in the comments below for those of you who are 
experienced with birds, professional bird nerds, or do you just want to share your experiences with everyone? You know, also post in the comments below and help out these newbies, okay? If you're into preserving birds, but you don't reach out to the younger generation, how's that for preservation? Just saying. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna get out of here. This has been fun, and uh, that's it.